Mountain Bike Trail informational meeting to order. And I can't see who all's here, so I assume we have a quorum, Jake. Um, if you are a park board member, please just chat, put in place in the chat that you're here. We have roughly 35 participants. Just and split screen. Jake, uh, I'm here, but I'm listed as uh, Ken for this meeting. I'm at a different location. No worries. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Jake, do you want to control the waiting room while I do the presentation? Yes. Um, Perfect. Yep, go ahead. Great. Well, for all of you that are here with us today on our virtual meeting regarding Maywood Park and the mountain bike trail or proposed mountain bike trail, uh, we have a dedicated group of individual boys um, in the neighborhood who have been working hard on um, putting information together to possibly add an addition of this mountain bike here in Maywood Park. So just a little overview of today's agenda. We are going to go through our subcommittee. We're going to go through the project overview. We're going to go over some demographics regarding mountain biking in Dane County, the survey results, some written submission feedback. We're gonna open it up for discussion and then any questions that we have. So for some quick introductions, we have Bennett Chapa, Miles Peterson and Jack Oliver who um, approached the park and rec department about adding an addition of a mountain bike trail into one of the existing parks in Monona. I'm going to let them take over part of the presentation from here out, and then they're gonna turn it back over to me once their part of the presentation is over. So boys, would you like to do your self introductions, please? I am Jack Oliver. Um, I am 12 years old. I do not have a mountain bike trail in my backyard, but I do like to mountain bike in Miles and Bennett's backyards. I'm Miles Peterson, I'm 11, and I have a mountain bike trail in my backyard, and I've ridden the one in Bennett's backyard. My name is Bennett, I am 10 years old, I'm in fifth grade, and I really like to ride in Miles' backyard, and I really like riding with them and building new features on, me, on, my, on, on our trails. Excuse me, this is Mick Heberlein out here. Is this being recorded? Because um, my mom lives adjacent to Maywood Park. She's not video virtual meeting savvy, or can I record it from this end and show it to her on my computer? Is that a problem? It's being recorded right now. Okay, for, all right. For, play, so, for playback okay. at a later date. Okay, all right. That's what I, I wanted to know. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. No worries. Um, Missy, there's one more slide in here that Bennett has, the land acknowledgement. Can he read that off? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Bennett. Okay, this is the land acknowledgement. Um, we did this, we wanted to do this land acknowledgement because this land, they, because this land used to belong to someone else and we really wanted to show them some respect. This is our land acknowledgement. The parks in our city were first Ho-Chunk land, and in the past, the government took away the land from the Ho-Chunk tribe. They also got forced to give up the land and leave the state. We respect the Ho-Chunk land and their nation.
Yes. So these are some words that the boys will be using in their presentation that they wanted to make sure you understood as an audience um, so you can follow along with them. Jack, why don't you start by introducing the berm? A berm is a banked curve made of dirt and logs that, and you, and you use them for turning like in the picture. A roller is a hump of dirt that can be used to build up speed and is a very fun feature to ride on and it can become small like a little bump and it can turn into a big hump sometimes. Jack, you have tabletop as well. The tabletop is a jump with a flat layer of dirt and has two ramps on each side. A skinny is a, is a thin strip of something to ride on and can be about five inches wide and can get up to one and a half feet wide. Um, this is the aerial map of Maywood Park. All the orange, all the orange things on the on the legend are, are wood. So, the two dotted lines on the dotted lines mean the trail. The the wood, the wood, uh, my bad, the orange, the white hump, the two white humps inside of the orange box, are 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 a wooden roller. The, the trapezoid inside of the orange box is a tabletop and the thin strip inside of the orange box is a skinny. And the orange dot we would like to suggest for a start. Um, this is a trail walkthrough video. Missy, I think you'll have to unmute yourself so you can hear. Yeah, Jake or Missy or you guys, we, there's no audio with the video. And use it somewhere else or put it to the side. I'm working on it. Let's see if we can get I hear it on my end. I think you need to do a different type of presentation. Okay. If we can get it. It's fine. We can just keep moving along with the, the video. We've got the map and kind of pictures of the proposed route.
The video is. Um, we can just send it to you guys so that you can get a clear, um, so you can hear it a little bit clearer. But from the last parks board meeting, this is basically their video they did kind of showing where the route would be potentially. Boys, feel free to chime in and explain what you're, you know, doing over the voice here, if you would like. Miles, do you want to talk a little bit about the video? Um, you did such a nice job creating it and doing a dub over. I can try. It's hard because the video is pretty choppy. But we would join back. There was a two-way two -way split there, but we would join back here and go over that log with like a roller. We could have some berms around these two corners. And now we're going to exit the woods for a little while. Now we're going back into the woods. Maybe a burn around that corner. Maybe another burn around that corner. And now we're gonna start going back along the drainage ditch with a wood skinny and a tabletop. Here, we're gonna join back up with the two-way part of the trail, which it was at the very start, or we could do a full loop. We're going around this wide because we don't want, when the trail is built, we don't want people um, crashing in and causing big traffic on the cement portion. Thank you. Thank you, Miles, for doing that on the fly. Really great job. So as you can see, the um, mountain bike trail itself um, really utilizes that uh, wooded area um, along the way through Mundo. Um, but we're really looking at trying to not impact the natural habitat and um, trees that are there. Any of the brush clear outs and um, management would really be in that um, kind of restoration part of just clearing some of the overgrowth uh, to allow the path to really happen. Just a little um, information about mountain biking in the regional trails uh, here in Dane County. Um, we have some trails in Fitchburg, Middleton, and Cambridge, um, but obviously getting there requires um, vehicles for most of the youth here in Monona, and that can really prohibit um, people from enjoying the sport of mountain biking. Um, and we just know that Studies show that people who live near walking and biking trails are more physically active, which we all live in Monona and probably see that every day on the Lake Loop. And, you know, the, just the closer that uh, we are to a trail, the more likely that trail will get used. Um, and it'd be great to have just another exercise opportunity for the boys and girls in Monona. Um, some of the survey results that we have here, um, 150 total responses as of this morning at noon. 
with 88% of that completion rate. 97% uh, of them uh, reside in Nona, and then 40% of the respondents were between the ages of 40 and 50 years old. Of those respondents of that 40 to 50 age range, 47% had four or uh, four individuals living in their household. And 50% of those had two individuals under the age of 18. So you can kind of see how um, the survey uh, graph on the left shows what features are currently being used at Maywood Park. So you can see that uh, the amenity at Maywood Park being used the most is the playground followed by the sledding hill in the winter months and then the sandbox. We do have some use on the walking paths and the other smaller amenities that we have there. And then on the flip side, if we ask, what would you like to see being used? It does show, and I know our survey is geared toward mountain biking, but it does show that mountain biking really leads the addition of what could be added here into Maywood Park. Uh, just some more demographic information. Um, on average, how often does someone in your family or you go mountain biking, and the survey shows that never is the leading answer, followed by some once a month type activities. Just with the question on the flip side of how often would you use a trail if one was in Monona, um, we grow um, on the once a week, uh, daily, and um, we decrease the never, which is great. Some other feedback that came across consistent on the um, other answers were multiple times a week. So not necessarily once a week, but not daily, looking for a couple other uses. Um, a lot of people were interested in trying out mountain biking since they haven't had that experience um, before committing to actually saying how often they would use it. And then Another common trend was how much, uh, uh, as much as parents would let me. Um, a lot of the respondents we had were um, be under the age of 18, which was nice. And I think they would use it very often. Um, majority of the people currently use a car to get to the trails that we previously mentioned in the other slide. Um, which can be a really big prohibitor, especially when we have working schedules um, and just different things to think about. Using a car can really be difficult. So um, some of the other common trend comments that aren't really showed in the graph is, you know, a lot of people used to trail ride. They don't necessarily trail ride anymore. Um, they're interested in mountain biking, but they haven't been able to take advantage of those local trails, most likely because they don't have the ability to live there. And then um, some people said that they do rides when they can, and then um, you kind of travel as their form of mountain biking when they're at a different destination. Um, some of the concerns, um, parking, noise pollution, environmental damage, littering were all some of the concerns that people did have. Erosion, um, cost and creation of maintenance, more bike traffic on the roads or not enough room on the roads um, for the walkers and joggers that are already present. And then some people had concerns that the overall park size was too small for adults. Um, the leading um, benefit people thought was that they just provide better health benefits in uh, general, and then they're just a great asset to have the park. And then a lot of people said that they would have selected multiple answers if they were. Um, mm -hmm. But overall, our question that we were concerned about was, would you support the addition of a mountain bike trail in Maywood Park? We had uh, basically 87-13 splits on uh, yes to no in support of adding a mountain bike trail in Maywood Park. And then these, some of the uh, question, or comments that we had, 
I tried to pick out some of the common trends again, since we had 87 respondents uh, for common um, answers. So these are just some of the common trends. I don't really wanna go through and individually say each of them. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes if you wanna read some of them and then I can head to the next slide. A lot of uh, benefits and concerns, I think were the trends on both sides. Um, and I think that on either side, we can work on figuring out what concerns can be addressed and then what benefits this park would really add for the people of Monona. Liz, to answer your question, um, sorry, we got dogs barking in the background, probably the mailman. To answer your question, the survey got sent out via email. All residents on the park got a public notice with the survey and information. And then it did on our social media platforms. Okay, thanks. I didn't, we didn't get any email. Um, I obviously I wasn't looking at the social media stuff. And I do have that letter. I was just, I just highlighted the zoom link. So yeah, no, I, I just, I just wondered. I know we did not, I, we did not receive an email and we are there on that park. It went out to everybody in 53716 that's on our um, email server for park and rec. So Unless you have um, something about no promotional emails, you should have gotten it unless someone to the would be my guess. Okay. Sounds okay. good. I'll, I'll look. That sounds good. Thanks. On to the next slide, just a few more um, comment sections of what people were um, concerned with. Um, and then we also have the full survey with all 87 um, comments and the rest of the survey information on the link below. Doug, can you give me a thumbs up if you think we're good to go to the next slide? Yeah, I think go ahead. If, if people are interested, they can they'll be able to, to see it um, on the city YouTube channel. Perfect. Um, just some written submission on some people that were um, either unable to attend or had some concerns uh, that contacted us directly. Um, we just had uh, Andy Shoup, uh, that he's unable to attend and they live adjacent to the park and would love to have the addition. And then on the other side, it sounds like um, they may be on the call uh, with us, but they um, have beautiful Maywood Park in their backyard and it sounds like they don't really want that to change. So those are the only two written submissions of any contact regarding the input meeting. Okay, open discussion questions. I know that was a lot of information and uh, we are here to answer and support. So I'm gonna try and open up my view to see if I can see if anybody raises their hand or if you would like to chat in the uh, comment or chat section as well, feel free. We can start to ask questions. You can also use on the bottom of the screen, there's a tab for reactions. And if you click on that, you can, it'll bring up an icon, um, except it made me go away. It should put, bring up an icon, so either way. Looks like Ken Walls would like to speak. Hello, are you folks able to hear me okay? Yep. 
Yeah, I just had uh, a couple comments. I, I, I support the proposal wholeheartedly. I'm a, I'm a cyclist myself, and I have a young daughter at home who's learning how to bike. Uh, we definitely uh, make use of the facility. Uh, the one thing I would like to suggest, though, is that at the committee, as you're planning, think a little bit more holistically about sort of bike infrastructure in Monona and how kids would get to and from Maywood Park to use these trails. Um, because uh, if they're just riding down Winnequa Street uh, to get there, they're going to go over the hill and then have to cross from the south side of Winnequa Street to the north side to get to Maywood Park. And there's no crossing there and would be kind of a dangerous route for kids to be traveling. Uh, my suggestion would be, you know, the sort of main congregation place for many of our youth right now in, in the city is, is Winnequa Park. That's where the play fields are. It's where the pool is. It's where the... Uh, the, the playground equipment is, it's where a lot of kids are, and thinking about creating a good bike corridor to connect Winnequa Park to Maywood would make a lot of sense. And I think you could probably find a route that would navigate between the library and Nuestro Mundo School so that the kids could navigate between those two parks without having to uh, ride through traffic and cars. You could probably even put a perimeter uh, off-road trail around Winnequa Park so that kids could, could do a loop around Winnequa and then could take the trail over to Maywood and it would be, a, a, I think, a much safer and a, a more attractive biking experience for children. All right, thank you. Um, we have discussed uh, a little bit about potentially making a trail connector not of the mountain bike trail, but it's a connection out on the north end to Nichols Road. And there also is an existing sidewalk that goes in about midway uh, on Maywood, but those are good suggestions. And I think Patrick, you were had your hand up, so go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to, uh commend the children for putting this together. Uh, I know my son Sal is very much uh, into mountain biking as well. And I think it's great for the neighborhood. And, and again, it's a good use of Maywood Park. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, commend them for putting all that work together and organizing this. And I fully support it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I believe Laura was next and then Liz. Yep, hi. <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. I, I think the kids did a great job of spearheading this. I have several concerns. We live directly across the street on Winnequa Road, directly across the street from Maywood Park. We use the park all the time. I think using the woods is a great idea for a park. Um, I mean, for the bike trail. I have serious concerns about putting that wood roller right in front where that's right in front of our living room window and that's on the way where we take the kids over to the playground and the playground is used a lot um my suggestion would be to think about that other access off nichols road i think that's a great idea that ken brought up um also possibly putting that wood roller out take the the map and from the parking lot head north out that way avoiding the playground avoiding going around the playground and staying towards the north end of the park and completely leaving that front of the park uh, just free space that's pretty much all my concern is but we are concerned about that wood roller and the noise and the kids right there close to the road thank you Yep, thank you. Liz? Hey, how are you? Um, hey, yeah, no, I am, I, I want to applaud these, these kids because I think they did a phenomenal job of looking at this and looking and trying to figure out something that was going to be not only healthy, but also something that they can do continuously as they're growing older, which I think is terrific. My, my concerns with the Maywood Park aspect, obviously we live on the Maywood Park. <laughs> we live on the Maywood Park. Um, I will, I concur with Laura as her telling about the wood rolling area, um, whether it's at the, whether it's 
close to the Winnequa area or close to the nickel side, I think my biggest concern is, has anybody walked through Winnequa Park in the middle left, like in a springtime when it's raining after it rains and recognize how much water we got back there? Um, you know, I, I, I think the, the trails in the woods are great, but as soon as we hit that grass area, that is just a water area that does not dry out. <laughs> so I'd be concerned. Um, not only just for kids and people riding through it, maybe some people like to ride through the mud piece of it, um, but I think that it is um, an, another piece of that puzzle is that grass area is pretty much used every day. One of the best things about living on that park is you see people out there throwing frisbees, playing catch. Obviously with dogs, people walk their dogs through there. Um, and I think that's something that if you have a bike piece that's coming through, um, potentially maybe that's going to be limited because people aren't going to want to be there and have their picnics and do their things in the park um, where, you know, living on it, we see it every day that people are there, even right now in the snow. Um, but I know the bike would not be used in the snow, but people, we could count anywhere between 20 to 30 people every day in that park, um, especially even on that back side. Um, on the flip side, though, the woods area, I think that's terrific. It's just woods area. So it would be great to get something in there for these kids. I think connecting it off of the top end of Nichols or something like that would be something to look at rather than running any of that green space away um, and putting something in that way. So that's just my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Uh, Damon. Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for hosting and, and thanks uh, for the proposal. I guess um, I, I put one question in the chat, but I'll ask it here. Uh, just curious, why Maywood Park, um, you know, I, I mentioned just a couple things about, uh, similar to Ken's comments, um, closer to the other recreational activities, I, I feel like Winnequa Park is more versatile in terms of the infrastructure, lighting, bathrooms, um, things like that. And then the other concern I had, because I had not seen the route before today, and it's very close to my backyard, at least the walkthrough in the video. Is there city ordinance about putting structures that close to lot lines? So two yeah, questions uh, there, sorry, but. There are, there are certainly zoning uh, restrictions that apply to the city as well as everybody else. I don't know that this trail would be considered a structure, but that's really a question for uh, the, that the city planner would have to answer. But this is why I think we wanted to do the meeting. It's also to get input about you know what the concerns are. And I, I think, and Missy, correct me if I'm wrong, but the plan is to have app take this input and you and Jake will work with these guys some more and uh, revise it and it will eventually come back to Parks Board again. So these guys are definitely they've done a great job and they're learning a lot about how government works. <laughs> Correct. And we um, are in um, working relationship with the mountain bike um, community here in town, the off-road pathfinders and um, Mike, if you're on and want to speak up for anything, but we do have some help and assistance to making some of these trails to make sure to hit some of those drainage concerns that um, somebody mentioned earlier and or that Liz mentioned earlier. And then Damien, to talk to your point, I mean, we did walk this in the winter time, so it definitely, I think we're up for the ability to shift and move as need be to make the path work. So I don't think our intentions by any means means is to be right on your property line. So we'll definitely stick away from that. Hey, Missy, this is Mike Rapp back with International Mountain Bicycling Association. I actually live uh, nearby on one on away. Uh, so I was on a call yesterday with the boys and with Missy. They reached out to me earlier in the week. Um, I've been a mountain bike trails professional for uh, many, many years, I uh, designed trails all over the world and uh, happened to be living in Madison to, to help out the boys. They reached out to me earlier and uh, very excited to uh, work with them on uh, sustainable trail alignment. There's some good opportunities there. 
And when we're designing trails, we look at drainage and how water flows. And we're also looking at neighbors and how um, trails may interface or not interface with neighboring properties. So uh, the boys have definitely reached out to the, the right people to get involved in the project along with myself and the Capital Off-Road Pathfinders, who's the local IMBA chapter. So they got some great resources on their, their hands now to take the project to the next level. Thanks, Mike. And then your other question in regards to choosing Maywood Park. Um, we chose this location because we did feel that it was a fairly underutilized um, aspect and park in Monona that had a lot of green space and um, I guess fun features with the um, wood area. Uh, learning from our meeting, talking with Mike, flat terrain is probably one of the hardest terrain to make a mountain bike trail. And when you start talking about like Winnicott Park and some of our other locations, it really is more of a flat terrain and would kind of be hard for the mountain bike process. So we just thought that Maywood Park really fit well with the location and proximity off of the Lake Loop to offer um, a good option for people to have uh, mountain biking. Um, just a quick comment to yep. the um, question uh, why we chose Maywood Park is because it's a lot easier to build a mountain bike trail in a wooded area that doesn't have grass than on just pure grass because you have to either tear it up or cover it with dirt. So it's a lot more work. Okay, Sorry. so I wondered, like Maywood Park is very deep. I'm, I was just a little surprised that we're talking about building as close to the front of the park. Like, has there been any thought to putting it further back that's like closer to Nuestro Mundo? There's a lot of woods back there as well. And actually a little bit more terrain. We're open to all and any suggestions. So um, I think our original thought process was just utilizing the parking lot that was already there in case some were still unable to in town bike directly there. Um, but we're open to any and all suggestions. All right, I, I, I would like to register that suggestion then to potentially consider moving it to the further back of the park there's already a path that people could ride around there to get back I, there. Have you been on there after a rain? The thing will be closed every day it rains and for like weeks after. It's, it's a, super wet back there. I thought that the board just put forward that retention pond for the back there. I thought that was just on the in the notes that I read. Is that still a conversation? Well, first, um, that has been talked about it's, we don't, you know, it's probably a number, quite a few years off. Um, this, the mountain bike trail won't necessarily, you know, won't necessarily be a permanent feature. It, it won't be that expensive to put in um, and to maintain. So if it did have to be moved for that reason, we wouldn't have lost, you know, put a lot of, sunk a lot of money into it. I think they're looking staff is looking at this as sort of a pilot project to see how it how it goes um got it all their go for yes thank you um yeah i just wanted to thank the thank the guys that put this together and um thank them also for being engaged in their local government um i wanted to make sure that um we definitely have some type of barrier for when the trails are wet because that will lead to some massive erosion. So it sounds like that's um, being accounted for. Um, I was gonna offer as a former mountain bike racer myself and road racer, I've used Quarry Ridge a lot. Um, so if there's anyone that is adjacent to the park that hasn't uh, seen a park like that um, and you would like a tour, I would be happy to take you out there to Fitchburg. Um, I, right now I'm on um, Dane County Parks Commission and we're developing a trail. And oftentimes when you're developing a trail, you do get conflict with neighbors. And um, some of the comments we've heard is concerns about bicyclists and crime. And I just wanted to, you know, make sure people knew that 
you know, there are no statistics that bikers are, you know, uh, kind of bring crime to your neighborhood. If anything, it's the opposite because it gives kids something to do. And um, it also raises your property values. And then I also wanted to just commend um, um, the idea of free access as a great equitable measure to this park. Um, and I like the idea of reducing the maintenance and mowing at the park by having this there. Um, it does sound like we might need a little more study um, and whether or not Winnequa Park, kind of maybe an area by the skate park where it's more insulated from neighbors, maybe that would be another alternative idea um, as, since this is a pilot project and it sounds like this does get very wet. Um, maybe we just look at a little, um, a little more study on that. So, and then I just wanted to thank the guys too for their land acknowledgement. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Um, Beth Esser and then Jack Stevens. Hi, thank you. Um, so full disclosure, I'm Miles's mom. Um, so I'm a little biased, but I think they've done a great job. But they have gone into this very open to feedback on, you know, what will work for the community. Um, one thing I wanted to share was that um, they really have put a lot of thought into um, making this a trail that is accessible really to all. So, um, you know, more advanced riders may not find it as challenging, but it will be a, a really great introduction trail for young riders. And Miles started biking several years ago, um, just on a little uh, bike that one of those little bikes without wheels or without pedals. And um, so it really is a sport that you can get into at a young age. And I look forward to more people um, in Monona being able to access a sport, which we have found very welcoming, very fun. And uh, the mountain biking community, um, I've been very impressed with in terms of their responsibility for um, respecting trail conditions, so not riding when it is wet, um, also helping out with maintenance stays and things like that. So I, I'm very excited about this and definitely appreciate everybody's feedback on, you know, the best location, the best access points, and, um, you know, if, if there is proper drainage or not at Maywood. Thank you. Thank you. Jack? Jack Stevens, you have to unmute yourself. You're muted, we can't hear you. Yes. You got it? Oh, well, we let's go. try it. <laughs> okay. Are you there now? Yep. Okay, I, I apologize. I'm in Florida. That's a long ways, you know, I mean, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, being a resident of Monona and on Maywood Park for the last 40 years, um, I really appreciate what has been done to Maywood Park. I mean, I remember the days when we were uh, cleaning out refrigerators and old tires from that park and making it what it is today. Um, with that said, uh, my concerns are, and I apologize because uh, my Wi-Fi is just absolutely terrible here and I didn't get on from the beginning. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure where that uh, route is for the mountain bikers, uh, whether it's through the woods, through the park or whatever. Uh, but I guess my question is with a large park like, and, and this may have been raised before, like I say, I apologize because I was not before. Uh, with such a large park as Winnequa, why wouldn't they go to that area rather than a smaller park uh, with residences right along the roadway uh, to Maywood Park? And uh, with, with that said, and not hearing what was said before, um, I, I guess that's my question. Okay, yeah, it was addressed briefly earlier that one issue with Maywood Park is that it's so flat, make, makes it more difficult uh, to, to build a, a trail. Sorry, that, that's Winnicott Park, with Winnicott Park. 
Yeah, that? right. Winnipeg Park would be. Correct. Did I say Maywood? Yeah, the Winnipeg is. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. I was saying, I mean, mountain bikers wouldn't want a flat, uh, a flat surface like. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, if we build a trail um, at Winnipeg Park. Um, it would be flat and we'd have to take up a ton of grass and probably only use wood features. So it would be kind of hard. And that's why we think that Maywood Park is pretty good to build an All right. Um, my screen's kind of jumping around, but Marilyn and Mark, and then after that, Margaret Nellos. Hello, are you there? Yes. I live at the north end of Maywood Park. Uh, I appreciate seeing the children play there. Um, I've ridden my e-bike up and down the sled hill, but I would like the park, to, this bike park to be at Winnipeg Park instead. They could build, put it, perhaps they could put in wood ramps. Okay. Anything else? Um, I do remember when the Boy Scouts put a path through there. They worked several weekends. Then after a few years, the path disappeared. So I've seen projects come and go in that park. Also, remember the ditch. There's a big ditch in the middle. I think it's a problematic park. It'd be better somewhere else. Uh, last question. Uh, how many of these boys uh, live on Maywood Street? Just one or more? Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Uh, Margaret Nellis? Yes, um, I live on Maywood Park, and one of the great joys of my life is to look out and enjoy watching the school children. They, their PE classes uh, come down when the weather permits and when school is in session, and I don't see how you can have the bike trail intersect directly with where the kids run um, hundreds of children um, every day when, when the weather permits. Um, so the idea of, uh, if it ends up in Maywood Park, the idea of having it connected off of Nichols Road um, sounds better to me. And I, I'm surprised to hear the park referred to as underutilized because the part that I look out on on the south end is highly utilized. In fact, there's parking issues there. Um, there's a lot of families. There's a lot of dog users throwing things. You know, dogs have been in that park no matter what the regulations for um, for a long time. And I guess I'm in favor of of retaining some peace in some of our parks. So, if it's possible to construct it in a park that already has noisy uses like the skateboard park or over at Winnequa with the children's area. Um, yeah, the forest is underutilized. I think the rest of the park is not. I also would reiterate that, um, oh, I didn't know that, that the, I, I didn't know that the school was moving, sorry. It, uh, it would be great if you could use that the, I don't know who owns the space behind the school, but I would also add that our backyard becomes literally a, a, has a small pond when the, when the rains come um, back and front. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of emergency traffic that runs up and down Maywood Road every day. So thank you. And I applaud the, um, the young men who put this together. They did an excellent job. Thank you. Um, Molly Groupie. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I want to make sure that we remember that this is an awesome project that was thoroughly researched and very well put together by three 12 year old boys. And so keeping the tone uh, conciliatory and positive, I think is a great, is a great way to handle this conversation. Um, I appreciate all the input. I think, again, I would say that these boys live in the neighborhood. They're close to the park. Um, I have never seen the Maywood parking lot full in my uh, eight years in this community. Um, and I think that, you know, the boys are right in saying that there is an underlied, underutilized area of the park that 
is open to the public, even if they don't live on the park, that is not just a park that belongs to the people who live in that neighborhood or, or who border on that park. Um, and I think it would be a really awesome opportunity to involve youth in the community in new activities and try something out. Um, I really think that this is quite impressive for these young people and I'm very supportive of this project. And I think that this place was chosen for a reason. Um, and I appreciate that the boys are here to share it with you and um, to, to accept your input on this. So uh, that's that's all I have to say. Okay, thanks Molly. Um, there's a number of people that still have, or that had their hands up. I'm not sure if that's, if they're still up from when they spoke before, but uh, Liz, Rody, did you still want to speak? Yes, no, I'm sorry. I just had one more question. And again, I, I still think these young men did a phenomenal job. And, and obviously, I, we see kids in these parks all the time. It is not underutilized. I will definitely say that that is an impossible piece. We live right there. We see it. Um, but we are um, definitely one, one of the questions I have is it doesn't sound like the water thought was really, really kind of emphasized here. And if you don't live on the park, you don't know about that water. Um, you know, we do a lot of fun tests through that water to watch things fly down when there's a torrential rain down, um, going down. Um, and it, it really, you know, if there's an infrastructure like we're talking about with that wooden ramp or anything like that, that'd be washed out within one of the first rains. And, and that's, you know, I wouldn't want all of this effort and all of these things put forth to have that not being studied or that not being a part of this thought process. So when you're looking at this park, is this really the park that has, it, it may have a great, it may have those great woods, which I agree would be absolutely amazing. Is there anywhere else that has something similar, um, maybe without the water issues that these, this will, this will under ride. Um, and I can tell you having to, after having to do our re redo our basement twice and having to have two sump pumps in the back basement. Um, I'm, I'm, it's, it's intense when the water comes, very, very intense. Um, and I just don't want an infrastructure that these kids are working on um, to be completely washed away within one, within one season, because all this work should be something that we're gonna continue to build on. Um, this is just like we said, a stepping stone with the hope that if we do something like this in our community, we will attract people that want to really work through this and become and work in our mountain biking community and things like that. Um, but I, I feel that we're gonna hit a barrier in Maywood Park that we won't be able to extend anything or do anything more. Um, whereas like we know, as we build these parks and build these things, there's every time we, we wanna build something more on top of it, which is, is really part about the growth. So um, again, these kids did a phenomenal job of putting this together. I, I, I applaud them. I, I know a lot of them just from my children being in school with them. But um, again, just really rethinking this park and the water flow, the water flow, and obviously the usage, the the, the people in the green space. Okay, thank you, uh, Patrick. Did you have another comment you wanted to offer? Nope, I do not. Sorry about that. that that's fine. Thanks. Um, and Mick Hebeline, did you have one speak? Yeah, and I will echo what others have said about uh, the kids and their their moxie to put this together and 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 bring it forward. And you know, it's it's not just off the cuff, and I can tell that. But I um, the, the concerns. I and I don't know if they're concerns, but I will echo again that even in a relatively dry season, it's still very wet back there which makes me wonder how how often it would be the the, the trail would be open um in a in a say a wet summer and what would happen if you know exactly how would you keep people out because i don't think you're going to fence the whole thing in and 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 that so I, you know that that can be addressed um i did wonder about if it, this was going to be long enough and if um you know, for the, the kids that brought this forward, they're 12, but when 15, 16 year olds want to do it, or are they, um, would they want to just beat, beat it up? I'm not trying to say anything negative, but, you know, I kind of wonder what if, because, you know, you keep going around around four, five, six, 12, 
300 times, you get a little bored with it. Um, I do would kind of support the putting it at Winnequa Park because it's a little more centrally located, a little more accessible, but I get what everybody else has been talking about with the, you know, harder to build on a, a flat ground, but you know, really where we're building this, that part of Maywood Park is flat ground. If you want, I could see it if you want to take it up onto the school district property um, up at Nuestro, um, the, but that's still owned by the school district here. You know, ideally if traffic wasn't such a problem, I, I'd try and build one of these things on the, the, the hill where the water tower is up on Monona Drive. But that would be more of a nightmare for people trying to get to it safely. But it's, you know, it's mostly wooded. There's not a lot of grass there. And, you know, you've got some natural hill there, but you're right next to Monona Drive. So, um, and I do applaud the, the city of Monona. Um, I will echo what uh, Mr. Stevens said that we can remember when it was just sort of a mosquito campground back there. Um, a lack of drainage, lack of mowing, and um, plenty of garbage. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, is there a Deb uh, on the call? Deb Kubel? Is, can you hear me now? Yes. OK. Um, I have also lived on the Maywood Park um, Road with my with Maywood Park in my backyard for 35 years. Um, it, my kids grew up in this park, um, went into the woods, played, made forts. The woods is is thick. The woods is full of raspberry bushes, prickers, thistles. Uh, to boot, there I, I've been through it myself, and if anybody hasn't walked through the actual woods, I suggest you take a walk through it. Yes, there's a lot of downed trees. There's a lot of dead cottonwoods. Um, and cottonwoods drop branches and fall wherever they want. Um, one of the cottonwoods fell on one of the park, um, in the park several years ago on top of the swing set and bent, bent it uh, pretty considerably. So, I mean, they considered uh, all of the safety issues with all the cottonwoods and they ended up taking out, um, I don't know, Jack Stevens could attest to this or even Mick uh, Eberlein, but maybe 40 cottonwoods uh, several years back because of the safety issues. There are still aging cottonwoods and they do drop their branches periodically. Um, that is an issue for kids going through the park. Um, and they don't drop their branches on a stormy day. They drop their branches on nice, warm, sunny, calm days. Odd thing about the cottonwoods. Um, not discouraging, but um, when the swale was built, it helped a little bit of the water problem. And I agree with Jack and Mick, the water problem and Liz. Water problem is a huge issue in Maywood Park. The swale has helped. But during heavy storms, the swale becomes an absolute rushing, raging river uh, coming out of the uh, storm sewers. Um, if there were biker, mountain bikers, I would fear for them going through those swales because the swales uh, will, they, they overflow the bank. It comes out of the storm sewer that hard. You have to remember that a lot of storm water from the are and, um, and dump we, it Squaw Bay. We actually would not be crossing the drainage ditch. We would only be staying on one side of it. Um, what I what I what I'm thinking is that um, some not necessarily you and I'm sure I respect all your your biking. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you would respect all the rules of the mountain biking uh, paths. But we have to remember that if you open it up to the public and you bring other people in from Fitchburg, Madison, Middleton, uh, the surrounding areas, they may not be as, um, they don't live there. So they don't have to, um, they don't have to adhere to it. Who's to say that they wouldn't be riding through the big puddles or through the swale? Um, 
And I understand that there could be, that you said the mountain bikers are, are a good solid uh, community that respects the, uh, the rules of mountain biking, but, but do they all? I mean, because those of us that live on Maywood Park, um, it, it is concerning to have um, not just all the walkers and people walk their dogs and, and um, girls on the run um, does their whole path through the bike path during school. Um, there's a whole bunch of people that, um, that just, just are going back and forth in general. And I think if you add all that traffic um, with the bikers, um, I, I just can't see bikers not biking through the park. Uh, you give them a trail, but if I were a biker, I'd kind of want to bike all over the place. And that means the park. So I guess I'm not quite sure if, uh, if Maywood Park is the best park because it's not clearly not that big. So that's my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jack Stevens, did you want to speak again? Well, I thought I did, but I'm having a problem again here in Florida. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm not sure this was addressed, but I know at one time we had a park court out there. Uh, was that addressed, Mr. Woods? Had a, oh, we had a what? A park court. It was a, called a park court. And there were like seven or eight stations where people went to one, oh. uh, one station, did one exercise, another station did another ex. Like I say, it was there forty right. years. I'm sorry, you, you're probably younger, so you wouldn't remember that. But uh, yeah, I've but, been here but that, for quite a while. You do remember? Oh, I remember. Yeah, and that was kind of a fad back in the seventies, I think. But yeah, anyway. well, you know, like I said, 40 years. Okay, but that, that did last a couple of years and then it was gone. Right. You know, so I'm not saying that Maywood Park is uh, not a good spot uh, to have a mountain bike course, but I think there are better options. That, that, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody on who has not spoken yet who wants to speak? Can you see me? Yep, yeah, now I can. Go ahead, Susan Stevens. Okay, um, I just wanted to put my opinion in here too and, and state that, that the park is very small. Uh, those of us that live on the park have decks in the backyard. So, and our, our, our yards back up to the park. So it's almost an extension of our yard. And, you know, if the trail was through the woods, that would be fine with me. But, you know, we also have fox in the woods. We sometimes have coyotes in the woods. We have all kinds of critters in the woods. And I happen to be an animal lover. And um, there, there goes all of that too. Um, I just think it's, it's a small area Boys, I really, I'm sorry. I think it'd be great for you to have one, but I think this is such a small park and we are at the north end. So if you try to move everything down there, you know, that's not my first choice either. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Thank Curry. you for giving us the opportunity to talk though. Sure. Appreciate it. Corrine. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I apologize. I did come a little late, so I hope I don't repeat too much, but I did want to register the support of my family for the park. I know it's just an open forum, but I just wanted to put that out there. And I, you know, a lot of what I've heard as, as I've been sitting here, um, trying to catch up with the conversation a little bit is, is concerns about having more, I mean, there's water concerns definitely. And I see the, the comments in the chat box that, you know, it, it, there might be some some more need to look into that, but this is a this is a public space in the city, and some of you, you know, I, I I respect that you have backyards that back up to the park, but you know I I don't think that's a reason for us not to think about putting some other 
um, amenities in that park to draw other people, those the, the rest of us who don't have a backyard that backs up to a park. So um, I, do, I do hear the concerns about the water and I do hear the concerns about the thorns or the, you know, the, the challenges within the woods, but maybe having a group that's interested in being in those woods more would actually uh, bring more attention to maintaining and pulling those invasive species and clearing out that, that thorny matter. You know, that could, we could get some more groups together. I think those are the types of things that we could um, figure out in terms of, you know, clearing out those, those thorny brushy species and making it more of an open trail that wouldn't be a problem to walk through. So um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, Bree? Hi, everyone. Um, I am Bennett's mom. And um, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's come tonight. Um, one of the things that we've talk to the boys a lot about is how, you know, um, not everyone agrees all the time and that it's an important part process to people together and to listen uh, to hear um, and that disagreement is okay. So thank you also for everyone's thoughtful uh, thoughtfulness and kindness towards the boys, even when they aren't necessarily in full agreement with all aspects of the project. Um, I did want to make a couple comments. Um, first, uh, being that the trail that uh, the boys are interested in building is not what they would call a destination trail, um, which is what you would see out in Cambridge, which has which is quite long, um, a lot of features. It's where people are willing to throw their bikes on the back of their car and drive to because it's that um, uh, you could be on it for hours and have and and. So that's considered more of a destination trail. That's not really what they're recommending to build here. Um, it really is something that is meant for people locally here in our community and with particular attention, as Beth had mentioned, to some younger onboarding of riders. Um, I did want to, uh, um, oh, which is also why I don't envision parking to be too much of a problem. Um, and there was something else I wanted to say and I've forgotten it. But um, I am learning a lot from everyone on here. Thank you, Deb, for teaching me about Cottonwoods. And um, thank you for everyone who's sharing more about the drainage issues. We are, if this continues in this park, which I don't know um, what the conversations will be after this, um, we do have expert uh, trail builders who um, are listening and taking note of um, all of these concerns. Um Three was the other thing you wanted to share on um, the environmental impacts because. Oh, yeah, I think so. Thank you, Jack. Um, so one of the things we've been learning, too, in terms of wildlife is that um, trail trail riding isn't seen as there's there's research out there that shows that it's not a permanent um, displacement for wildlife. Maybe you have a, uh, some temporary displacement while someone's on the trail, but it's it doesn't permanently displace any wildlife in the area. And I think there was even some information about the types of animals that temporary displacement affected. Um, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't the animals I heard discussed tonight. And Jack, I don't know if I, that captured what you were thinking, um, but feel free to speak up and share anything else. I, um, I just want to say, I am also an animal lover and I, my grandma, she really, she really likes owls. Yeah. She works at wild, uh, Wildlife Rescue up north, so we are especially interested in wildlife research, preservation. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, there's a couple, Margaret, and you have your hand still up, the icon. I don't know if you wanted to speak again or not. Nope, okay. And is there anybody who hasn't spoken yet who would like to speak? Marilyn and Mark, you still have your little hand icon thing is up. I don't know if you can take it down. It's fine. Um, all right. Well, this has been awesome. I think we have uh, had about almost 50 participants. Still have 45 right now. So we got some really good feedback. 
Missy, you're gonna. This is being recorded and saved. It'll be put up on the city YouTube page. Can you also save the the chat as well? Yes, I will do that as well. And the final approval. I don't know if Doug was going to get to it, but I do have the information here on our screen. It's going to be taking place at Park and Rec Board um, on the 9th of March. Correct, Doug? Yes, it'll be on the be on the agenda for to make a recommendation to the city council. So with that, uh, really thank everybody. Thank the, the guys for uh, putting this together and for all the, the input that we had today. And it looks like a few more chats are still coming in. So I'll leave it open for a couple more minutes in case we have some typers that are still going. Okay, that sounds good. And then I'll say from there. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you back. <laughs>